Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community, Oceania Hundoke with Reverend Yataka Yamada, today being Wednesday, the 22nd of September, or the 16th of August in the ninth year of Chongyo Book. Let's begin by offering a, a bow to our Heavenly Parents and True Parents. Chariot, Kyumbe. And let's recite our family pledge both in Korean and English. Thank you. Kajong men say, Chil, Chonne Guk Chuin, Uri Kajongan, Cham Sarangul Chunsmago, Ponyone Hiltongwa Yongol den, We had a same father Tohayo, Shim Jom Muna Seger, One song Halkosri, men say Hanaida. Family pledge number seven. Our family, the owner of Chongwu Book, pledges through living for the sake of others to perfect the world based on the culture of heart, which is rooted in the original lineage by centering on true love. I'd like to ask uh, uh, Tony if you could offer the opening prayer, please. Thank you. Good morning, dear Heavenly Parents. We thank you so much for this <clears throat> brand new morning and that we can gather together here online from all around uh, Oceania. Heavenly Parents, we thank you that every new day truly is a new beginning. And we pray that as we start the day that we can uh, really feel close to you and that you can be here with us, that we have this strong feeling of uh, friendship and togetherness as we walk this path uh, with you and with our true parents. Heavenly parents, we really pray that uh, we can be instruments of your love and of your truth in all situations, whether it's um, during this online Hunda uh, K session or whether it's with our families, and of course, especially when we meet other people uh, through our witnessing, through outreach, and especially at this time where brothers and sisters are reaching out to invite pastors and ministers to the um, events on the 4th and 5th of October. Heavenly Parents, we pray for the safety and protection of our True Mother. Um, we can't imagine <clears throat> uh, the responsibilities that she has and the, uh, she, <clears throat> she knows that if she doesn't do this work, then who else would do it? So I really, really pray, Heavenly Parents, please uh, give her good health and, um, and we pray for, the, for protection. There's still a lot of negativity in the world uh, despite um, everything and um, please protect all our brothers and sisters as well, particularly those who are uh, alone somewhere. Um, it's not at all easy to be pioneers in a nation or in a city even. And um, anyway, we really welcome you to be here with us now, Heavenly Parents. Thank you that you've given us this uh, situation to uh, listen to True Mother's um, autobiog uh, bio <coughs> autobiography. And uh, thank you for Reverend Yutaka's uh, investment in us. And uh, we, yeah, please be here now. And I pray and ask this in the name of Tony and Keitha of our Best Central family, Arju. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's give a warm welcome to Reverend Yutaka as he shares this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, our brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming this morning from the Cray. Today, also the beginning of the day, we are really appreciate everyone to come together to put our heart, our heavenly parents, holy community, how much beautiful to you see and share together. So let's offer our sincere devotion and chansong and heart to our heavenly parents and to parents. And each day's talk chansong surely will be preparation and connected to all our brothers and sisters in our nation and in our region of Oceania and also to the world. So let's put our sincere devotion. 
Now each nation is preparing for inauguration of a Pacific Christian Leadership Conference. So Samoa, many Christian, the good Christian pastor is connected and to organize several events. I hope already you had a good event yesterday. And also another nation are organizing all our Christian and the minister's name list and to inviting and sharing. Australia side already prepared around 11,000 um, contact, uh, all Christian contact, right? So this is really at least sent to reach everyone is really important things. And some answer also reply is coming on. So in we are going and doing many kind of investment and effort and Johnson in each place. But really one of the important things is that even we are doing activity, but those things is not carried on by own power or only just individual effort. Beside or behind of that, every parent Chon Song is there, three parents investment is there. And in the same time, those Christian pastor or minister, their Chon Song and their heart is also prepared in each place. And even before they met that Jesus Christ, already their ancestor, also spiritual world, even angel guided all our Christian brother and sisters. That's why sometimes maybe our chonson is not lacking enough, but their, their chonson is already full of chonson. That's why even our side chonson is not enough, but they could come. Of course, there is opposite things. If their chonson is not enough, but if we put offer more chonson, then they could come. So towards chonson and foundation, then we can come together. That's why beyond our own concept, own imagination or own uh, thinking, totally we deny our own concept to unite with our heavenly parents, centering on God's point of view and based on the victorious foundation of heaven, we will invest, and we will approach to all people. Surely many good testimony will come. So if you have good testimony, please also share to us or even share to your national leader, then another people can be inspired. When I do this activity or I approach this person or I approach this Christian minister, those experience or those unimaginable things was happened. So those testimony will give the inspiration to another, our brother and sisters. So please collect even small story or a good story or even your investment, please share. Then we can share to others together. Then those story, of course, going to three mother finally. So let's create together Tower 2027. So when we invite them, in the beginning, maybe they will come as the guest, but finally they will become the person who create and fulfill the vision 2027 and establish the kingdom of heaven on earth together. So let's do our best to offer victory to our heavenly parents and to your parents. So let's go to the Fundokpe, Mother of Peace. So from yes, now we in the mother's autobiography, we are sharing the providence of South America. So yesterday also, thank you for your beautiful testimony also. Uh, Mr. Alai share about the providence of Japanese national messiah about South America. Really more than 20 years, national Japanese national messiah received a special mission from three parents and to invest, develop that place of radar or some place of South America. So even there are big land, but the quality or the land or soil situation is not easy, but continuously invest organizing the project. This chonson is really precious. Through this chonson, people start to accept and come together. And those investment, our three parents investment to 
uh, South America, this really physically help their life to find the food and to teach them how to get the food. So later I will share, I will show the video again. So we could see also the South America situation. And yesterday, Mrs. Margaret also testified about Brazil missionary to Palau, the victim in Palau. So that's what history, but really his mother came to Palau and pray to the person who killed own son, the name of Jesus, and share the Jesus word. So this is spirit, this attitude itself is actually really the Christian's tradition and attitude toward heaven, toward people, and toward Jesus Christ. That's why really our Christian brothers chun song and attitude to live for others, sacrifice and love enemy. Those heart, those devotion and those tradition, those faith is really great and precious. So thank you for sharing also. So we could see many good testimony in the history. If we don't meet, if we don't think, or we, if we don't experience deeply, we don't, uh, we cannot understand each history or background. That's why in Christianity, how much they offer their life for 2000 years for Jesus Christ to welcome our second coming. When we understand, then how much this time, this time period is important. Already, second coming is here. Already, two parents here. They are waiting so much, but still they could not recognize. This is actually some deep agony. So we have to show, guide them, and come together. So really now is we are living the precious moment. So let's continue the fundo. So to the mother went to do to the parents do the speaking tour, and also mother share the beautiful nature of South America, and also there are special uh, fish dorado and baku or many uh, fish there in South America, right? We could see that, and also the paradise. So let's read this one. If if paradise on earth is defined defined by having many different creatures living together in a lush green garden, Mato Grosso do Sol belongs in that paradise. Its vast territory is covered by virgin forest and world wetlands. It is ideal for cultivating a farm or caring for an orchard. Enormous trees provide shelter and sustenance for many kinds of birds, insects, and animals. The river are clean, and some of them are quite clear. There are more, more than 20 waterfalls, including the famous Iguas Falls, that sandals where Brazil meets Argentina. So talking about really the paradise. How can you imagine the paradise if really there, there is? Or can you imagine the original garden of Eden? The plant, animal, or nature live together. That's kind of the fundamental happiness, not just material happiness. So when we read the Bible, when we listen the divine principle, maybe at least one time you imagine what is the Garden of Eden? So three parents came to South America and three parents felt the original, the feeling of original nature or original idea of creation without, without human uh, touching or influence. So three parents tried to create the model Garden of Eden in South America. Even though it was South America's hottest season in December of 1994, we brought our senior missionaries from around the world to experience a fishing workshop 
on the Paraguay River. As the sun blazed on those days, local people would wade into the river and lie in the water to cool off, watching us curiously while we fished. So this time is the first time for three parents to visit to Jaldin. Three parents visited the many places, but Jaldin, visitation of Jaldin is first time in 1994, December. So that year, three parents started to total investment. The Providence, focus of Providence was moving to the South America. Maybe some of you attended this time. So 1994, December, through parents first calling to the leader, someone went to South America at that time, 1994, December. Nobody. So that time, the parents visited and started the progress in South America. So every moment, a different place, a different environment, and different feeling. But that time also, the parents went there and offer chonson in Paraguay river and fishing. So we maybe we also we can imagine that or we should pray for father when the father went to Jaljin and that place Paraguay river. What kind of heart? What kind of prayer did he do during fishing time? Paraguay island and see the old virgin nature of the forest and also feel God's original heart, but also he could see many foreign society in the world, how he could imagine God's heart, God's original plan, and also the first moment of the Garden of Eden. If we could feel, this is really great to connect with our three parents' heart. So three parents invested and invested to that place of South America. As beautiful as the Pantanal was, one had to be careful at the time. We would take a boat up the river, dock it, and explore the countryside. Sometimes we could barely get through tangles of vines hanging down from enormous trees, and we would have to crawl on our bellies. We often would not return to the boat until midnight. We would really on a steel cable stretched out through the forest to guide us back in the dark. So Mada is sharing about the beauty and also atmosphere of the nature, right? Many animal, wild animal, a beautiful tree, and beautiful so fish, and the plant, flowers, nature. So there, that place is the beautiful place. There is the beauty of the wild nature, but in the same time, the danger is also same. Can you imagine when we go to the jungle, there is no protection and just original nature is there and animal, bird, and as a plant. If we are staying there only one night time by oneself, how much scared, how much dangerous. And of course, mother is not staying by oneself in night time, but really dark night in the original virgin nature. Maybe it's not easy to use the light inside of the jungle. Maybe using light is protection, but also using the light in the dark nature is also to be the danger to call the animal wild wild animal to your place. That's why Mada is telling that dark or that environment, there is also the dark place. I'm not sure you went to dark night in jungle in Jardin or that place. Jardin is not many jungle, right? Flat, flat land, right? I think. So, but some area, the place where three parents invested, there is many jungle or those forest also. When we rose before down every day to continue, we again would deal with sweat, sweat, sweltering heat 
and swarms of mosquitoes. It was a strenuous routine. My most difficult task was bathing. I, I would awkwardly put up a screen for privacy in the narrow boat so I could wash myself with the murky river water. But it, in my heart, I welcome such primitive and natural conditions. So when your father went to the ocean or went to river for fishing, and also when your father went to unprepared or those natural place, that meaning is your mother also go together, right? A man, male and female is different. So how your mother stay together to live on the board, live on natural place without any facility, your mother also experience and overcome and embrace and mother said welcome that place really mother also felt if garden of eden the first our ancestor eve eve was there how she was living that place so mother also embraced that environment and to enjoy that atmospheres near the mato grosso do sol town of jaldin jaldin we built a headquarter for global education, called the headquarters for the education of ideal families for world peace, and set up the new home farm to establish foundation to build God's nation. The local townsfolk told us that an old prophecy predicted that Jaldim was where the Lord will come. So that time, two parents decided to create the headquarters in Jaldim. And there was many education workshop that place. Two parents called the old breast family to Jaldim and to educate and having the 40 days special workshop. And that time also, three parents said, if you join this workshop, you could take photos with three parents. Am I correct? So when you go to Jaldim and take photo together, that's really a historical moment. Because that time I was a still student, I had just a story. I really envy so much. Many elder breast families, elder leader went to Brazil and Jaldin stayed together, take photo together with three parents. Wow, that is really historical and their love from two parents. So meaning of Jaldin is connecting to the Lord and also the Messiah. So we could see many history, the place, so now we, pre we watch the video again, how three parents invest. Also, you could see the nature and also the local people. Local people also happy to work with us, to welcome us and also stay together with us. So through the video, we could feel again, maybe some of you could not, could not go to the Jaldim or South America. So please imagine that, oh, South America feeding and environment. So Reverend John, please play the video. This ideal of world peace began to substantiate centered on the Pantanal. The nations in the center of South America, Brazil, Bolivia, and Paraguay hold the world's largest wetlands. Additionally, the Pantanal has been designated as a UNESCO Natural World Heritage Site. A plan was devised to protect this spectacular natural landmark from unscrupulous exploitation in order that it could coexist with humanity. This was the basis for Reverend and Mrs. Moon's Pantanal project. In 1995, the Pantanal project began by establishing the New Hope Farms in Jardim, Brazil. There was no running water or electricity. We were surrounded by 360 degrees of trees and nature. There were no buildings. We started living in that type of environment. At first, I couldn't even believe that I had really come here. When it came to our projects, we were at a loss. It's been 20 years since the start of New Hope Farms. Yet in order to reach Jardim, one must still take a 90-minute flight from Sao Paulo to Campo Grande, 
followed by a three-hour drive. The wasteland of 80,000 hectares has now been transformed into a base for solving world hunger, complete with a main hall, a school, and a dormitory. This barren earth now resonates with the energy of healthy wildlife and humane development. Herds of hundreds of cattle testify that the ranch has been successful. The environment has changed dramatically from what it used to be. Pioneering in the New Hope Farms has not yet finished. Early each morning, people still diligently make efforts to cultivate the land. This area is still being tested by various methods to discover which crops will thrive in the soil and how to best increase the harvest. Look at the large root vegetable. This is a manioca. In Brazil, many people eat this as their main dish. The manjoca is similar to the Korean yam. Various fruit trees have been planted, including orange trees, avocado trees, and sugarcane have also been planted elsewhere. And these will soon also yield fruit. Here, at this New Hope Farm, we plant fruit and manioca to feed our families. How did this wasteland change so much? We are curious about what they have been up to for the past 20 years. When he first bought the Jardim farm, it was an empty wilderness. In addition to developing a farm in this remote area to help eradicate hunger, they also believed in the importance of teaching family values and their meaning. When you build a healthy, upright family, the society becomes an upright society. Then the nation can become one of healthy families, and it can spread to the world. They believe that a happy family is the basic foundation for everything. When an honest parent and child create a family, world peace will naturally come about. Therefore, they develop projects that emphasize the importance of family, the basic cornerstone for human happiness. Additionally, they focused on another issue. They donated 29 ambulances to the people who live in the Pantanal region. To live in poverty means limited access to health care, even if you are sick. The hospitals are too far, and there are no means by which to reach them. We are donating these ambulances to solve this problem. However, more reflection was needed. Casting their fishing pole in the rivers or jardin, they meditated without rest. Reverend Moon fished there for long periods of time. It wasn't the usual type of fishing. He said he wanted to solve world hunger and fished from morning to night every day. He would forget to eat and his face became dark from the intense sunlight. He fished in these tough circumstances, desiring to solve world hunger. Through this period of meditation, the Pantanal project gradually became complete. A basic solution to overcome poverty was discovered right before their eyes. We believe that the original intentions of our founder, Reverend Moon, 
will come to fruition through the Pantanal Jardim project. It is the vision that people will love and protect the natural environment and not destroy it, maintaining it for the sake of humanity. In Jardim, they will continue to take up this challenge. The Pantanal project has now become a large stream that flows throughout South America. Pantanal is also in Paraguay, located in the center of South America. This is Leda, located in the Chaco region of Paraguay. After Jardim, Reverend Moon invested in Leda the most. From Asuncion, it is a 90-minute flight to a location unreachable by car. A remote and desolate area, it is a difficult place to live. We went to a village near Leda. One glance shows that the natives living in this village do not have enough. The villagers do not avoid the strangers. They show their simple homes. There are no modern conveniences. A family of 10 lives in this single house. We use this lamp at night time. Sometimes we use diesel, but we also use beef tallow a lot. Basket weaving is this family's only source of income. After spending three days weaving a single basket, they earn what is equivalent to 7,000 won. Even if they work hard, there are many days when the baskets do not sell. There is not enough to eat in the kitchen. Without a good water supply, they are forced to drink the river water. We visited another family's home in the neighborhood. Their father has just returned from working outside the village for 20 days. The husband hands his wife his pay. What kind of work would a husband do in this village where baskets are the only income? In Reda, the work is handling fish. We are living well. There is no work in our community. Because of Reda project, I could get a job. The work of the husband seems to bring smiles to this family. Thank you very much. So you could see South America, were well, really beautiful place. And father and mother, were well, really many elders, were well, blessed family, invest there. So when we see our two parents' providence, actually really cultivating and pioneering to that place where there was nothing, but cultivate, invest, and change or develop that place. So when we see our to the parents' providence, everything they are cultivation, not only physically and spiritually together. Spiritual cultivation and also physical cultivation. We are also part of this to doing, to cultivate a spiritual foundation in our place. That's why in the beginning it's not easy, invest and fail, invest but disappear and cultivate and cultivate and to develop those foundation. So really, South America, Providence, we could see how beautiful and really people are happy to work together and to our true father, really I miss true father also, really invest totally together like father to stay together. He doesn't wear some suit or a good clothes, right? Just really some father in the house together with our brothers and sisters fishing together, eating together. So really we could feel and really miss our father, father's love. 
and father's heart. So we are through our true mother's sharing of our true mother's autobiography. We also connect or remind again. So today we are sharing about South America Providence and also heart of our true parents. Yeah, we pray our sincere devotion and sincere heart and let's create the new beginning, a new day of today. Thank you once again for joining Morning Hundoke. Let's have a great time. Kamsamida. Thank you, Reverend Yutaka, as always, yeah, really helping us see more clearly the, uh, uh, the beauty of uh, uh, Brazil and, uh, and uh, the experiences there. Uh, yeah, I was like, we were lucky enough to go to Brazil and, and, uh, and see a lot of the, the things that, yeah, that were in that video and, and, uh, and how the yeah, uh, people lived from very rich to you know, very humble. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've reflected on a, a few things. You know, I just reflected on the word garden. You know, it's, uh, you know, that we, you know, the paradise is a garden. You know, and to me, garden is just very simply a, a place that's cared for and, and loved for, and it's not abandoned or neglected. Uh, the garden doesn't have to be a, a manicured, you know, uh, pristine sort of uh, area. It can be a, a wild area but it's it's cared for yeah, and loved, and and uh, in uh, a couple couple one one thing I uh, there's many things, but one one thing I remember was uh, in Jardim, uh, two parents brought some horses, some tamed horses, and those tamed horses attracted a lot of wild horses, and these wild horses had just come walking through. Uh, where where we were, they just would walk around uh, together uh, with the tame horses, and uh, uh, and uh, I often saw some of the second gen there. They would uh, uh, challenge themselves to uh, uh, ride bareback on the the wild horses, so they would uh, 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 walk up to the horses who were very friendly uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, somehow managed to get on their back without them uh, you know, you know, throwing them off and they, they would start riding around uh, on these wild horses. And I, I just was reflecting how if, if uh, anything is cared and loved, then it just willingly you know, at, uh, uh, lets itself uh, uh, be uh, uh, used because uh, they, they felt uh, you know the 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 uh, the safety. So I was I was quite impressed to see you know, how they they got on and rode around and and, uh, and you know, often the horses just did what they felt like. <laughs> they didn't have much control. <laughs> horses would just go and they would disappear for an hour and then come back. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, there's. Yeah, it was a, a, a beautiful, uh, but also harsh environment. And I remember you know, driving when we were on the bus drive going through Argentina and Paraguay into Brazil, you know, uh, you know, seeing really nice places uh, right next to uh, uh, slums, pretty much. You know, just uh, uh, you know, houses that were just... Uh, a couple of pieces of wood put up, you know, like they showed there that you, know, you could clearly see that uh, light through the walls and through the ceilings. You know, I mean, obviously when it rained, they all got wet inside. Uh, so yeah, I, but still they they stayed there. Yeah. It was a, a, a beautiful experience. So thank you. Uh, you got your hand up there, Chris. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks, John. Just a quick uh, testimony. Some of you may have heard it before. I've given it quite a few times. Some may not. But um, when I was in Alaska, it's relating to when you read out, uh, Reverend Yamada read out Mother's words about uh, enjoying the fact that she had basic things and bathing in muddy water and... Um, Testimony is that uh, some of the older members 
uh, when father went to North Garden, he wanted to go fishing in a remote area and they had to organise somewhere for him to stay. So they found this caravan for him, but they didn't have time to go and look at it. And it was an old logging caravan. So when they got there, and I'll just add to the story by saying we had a beautiful house in Seattle where true parents come, but it was a little run down and they came there and just said to the leader at the time, this house is not fit for true parents to stay in. So in some circumstances, they, uh, when they have to be represented officially, that's how they act. So, you know, same area, not the same people, but same atmosphere. And that father, they went to see this caravan and father's coming, he's already arrived. And they opened the door and it smelled of urine and alcohol. It was completely de derelict. And so they just thought, oh, well, this is it. We're going to get excommunicated, you know. So that father walked up and they're all very nervous. And uh, he opened the door and he walked in and he literally took a deep breath and just said, ah, the smell of nature. And <laughs> I realised at that time I had some sort of experience. This is not an act. This is not him thinking this is how I should react to this. That, that's what he really felt. And I think that's what happened with mind, body, unity. You know, you, you can accept these things. And a lot of the reason my father could accept sleeping near toilets in prison and things like that, he didn't have to tolerate it. He just was part of him. Anyway, just a little experience. Thanks for that. Yeah, thanks, Chris. <laughs> Uh, yes, Rivenito. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, good morning to everybody. I think already uh, the, Mr. Arayo already explained about the the radar and the, that place. My my experience in you know the uh, Olimpo. This is a, you know forty days workshop for Japanese National Messiah. Originally, this is a fishing workshop. So everybody prepare for a fishing rod and go there. <laughs> the, in reality, there's a, you know, that area is, that the period is prohibited. You know, government didn't allow the fishing. So <laughs> we offer this rod to the local fisherman. <laughs> offer, a very expensive one, you know, <laughs> rod to the, offer to the local fisherman. And uh, what we did for the days is like a muddy walk, you know, like a construction and uh, on the house and the training center. And also we make uh, cement, make cement <laughs> with very hot, you know, only 10 o'clock, you know. So we physically walk everybody. And the senior uh, person like uh, Reverend Sudo, senior person is not make like a physical walk. They make like a collecting, uh, you know, something uh, waste from the to toilet like this. <laughs> And I made, you know, physical work for the, uh, and also there's a washing, you know, shower is, is also a problem. So we, we wash our body on the river, in, in river, small piranha in the, <laughs> stitching us, <laughs> small piranha, you know, biting our, our skin, you know. And by this, every, every morning, <laughs> we're washing our body. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and so this is, the, you know, river is very like, a, like a coffee, coffee color dark, you know. <laughs> and uh, this is amazing experience, you know. And all National Messiah, you know, make experience. And the father came, you know. We, really, we touched the nature, the 40 days, and the bed hot. And later, I become uh, like a sick, you know, <laughs> because too heat, you know, <laughs> too much heat. And so this kind of experience with the nature, beauty, beauty, but, uh, not beauty, <laughs> too much mosquito and, uh, you know, uh, insect and uh, heat. And uh, in this place, we make walk, uh, physical walk in the morning, early morning. And uh, I, I made even in sashimi, you know, piranha sashimi. <laughs> I made sashimi to the, you know. Uh, anyway, it's good also, yeah, good taste, yeah. Something like this. Yeah, it's, this is through this, Father really asked us to return touch the nature and later further, you know, dividing the Paraguay River to each nation. Yeah, it's to development originally, so each nation. 
this is a thank you so much for <laughs> father's investment and we touch father's you know you know father's and prayer in the Paraguay river is not easy the is huge name father did you know for 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 forgiveness of the second generation sin you know did with huge in 40 days in the ninth, i think 2001 40 days before or uh, father made uh, you know coronation ceremony yeah does victory make coronation ceremony and and the january 13 2001 yeah thank you so much Yeah, thank you, Reverend Ito. Uh, go ahead, Jeff Hives. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, everyone. It's really uncanny, God's providence, um, in a parallel um, place in Africa. As I've mentioned before, we did similar kind of uh, projects, and I could see the same cattle, those white Brahmins we had, 500 head of those and um, same washing in the river and catching fish and living uh, in the forest. Um, it's amazing. Anyway, uh, one thing, uh, of course, it's good to experience this uh, very basic primitive lifestyle, but we have in us a desire to always improve our environment and uh, you don't notice it so much in developed countries, so much your environment. We already live in a very amazingly comfortable environment. But one thing, especially the missionaries in these countries, especially in Zambia, as soon as you get there, you realize, wow, this food is very basic and tasteless and, uh, <laughs> and harsh mosquitoes and uh, everything is like that, you know. Uh, so you want to improve your environment. And um, we cannot all live in uh, the jungle. And we have huge cities with millions of people, but we need to feed them through proper cultivation of the land and so forth. Very, um, this uh, kind of, uh, not many know so deeply the uh, coming of Hunjanim into, um, into Africa, into Zimbabwe. Just like uh, Damanim guided the providence of Chompyong for quite a few years, the uh, Damanim uh, took over the body of Mrs. Kim and spoke to brothers and sisters to build the Chompyong providence. Similar situation happened in Zambia and Zimbabwe, where Hunjanim took over the body of this man for quite a long time, a year or so, and guided brothers and sisters. And... Um, at the conclusion of his mission there, he went to Korea. And according to my understanding, Father told him that he cannot continue the providence like that and would, should return to the spirit world. But one thing that uh, he told us when he was there, he said, Father cannot build that palace in the swamp land of South America. <laughs> uh, he said, uh, talked about the foundation in Korea and he said the palace needs to be built in the Korea, the chosen nation. And as you well know, uh, the providence after then began in Chompion with the cooperation of um, the mother son of uh, Damanim and Hunjinim who began to hold the workshops and build the palace in Korea. And then the whole providence shifted back to Korea. So that's my understanding of uh, the incredible uh, technological world in Korea and its foundation to help what we are doing today to broadcast to the world and educate all of humankind through Korea's incredible foundation. So yeah, anyway, blessed are those who are able to live in that environment in South America and really get back to nature. And uh, most amazing, if you're able to follow two parents, it's a difficult course you're dragged through all kinds of jungles and forests, but if you can hold on to the tiger's tail, uh, you can have amazing experiences, but don't get left in the jungle. Uh, <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, we have a beautiful world to develop with amazing technology to bring prosperity to everybody. Thank you very much.
Yeah, thank you, Chief. Uh, uh, go ahead, Douglas. You got your hand up. Okay. Um, yeah, getting anything going in, in this uh, generation coming from a fallen world is like pulling an old lawnmower out of the shed that hasn't run for a couple of years and trying to start it. So that, that, that goes for building projects, you know. I had two building experiences down there in Jardim. One was a, a man named Tiger, and he said, I got to know him, and he, he came up and he was explaining about his life, and he said, you know, in 1973, um, True Father sent me to America with the mission to pray for a university, you know, and um, long story short, you know, he was there for 21 years, and then Father said to him, I said, now, I want you to go to Jardim and pray for a, uh, a global university, and um, the, the man thought to himself, he says, yes, I will go, but I haven't even built a university in, in America, you know. And that was what Father told him to do, to pray for and find and, well, build a university. So it turned out that he left, he went to uh, Jardim, and uh, soon after that, but uh, he asked me, guess what city that I lived in in America for 21 years? And I couldn't think of it. And he said, uh, Bridgeport. <laughs> so <laughs> he lived in the city of Bridgeport, University of Bridgeport. He prayed there in that city for 21 years. But his message was, he says, before father does anything, it's very important that he sends people out. Uh, and I was sent out in that position to lay the foundation of heart, you know? And I was so impressed with that. So, you know, before any big providence that true father does, special people were there to pray. And it was really quite inspiring to me, you know? Um, so, and then the other the other thing was when, when Mary and I went, we went in 99 to, uh, um, Jardim, and um, we found ourselves in maybe like 15 people, I think 15, maybe 20 at most. Um, and uh, collectively, we sensed that at that particular time, the, the, the lawnmower was not working too well, you know, uh, there was disunity, and it was palpable. And we, we were a little bit alarmed, and we felt like, what can we do about this? So as Americans, we were thinking, we need to pray, you know, and so we had one Korean sister who was um, the, the wife of a um, security guard at East Garden for a long time. She was there, a Japanese brother and myself, you know? And we started this prayer condition and asked other people in the American workshop to pray for it. Um, so we wanted to pray that they could achieve unity, you know? Because they're all new at this. They're all, they got big responsibilities to build cities and all, so many things going on. Um, but in the middle of that prayer, in prayer condition, I can't remember if it was the end or the middle, but a windstorm came that it, what came with horizontal winds. And it literally took the roof off the temple. You know, the, the whole roof was shifted a meter and a half off. And that was big, you know. So the, the upshot of it was they built the building too big, you know, uh, too quickly. They didn't double check things. And um, there was a lot of uh, confusion on working together between the, the nations. When I got back to America, I spoke to uh, Dr. Hendricks about it. And I said, yeah, the roof uh, was taken off the building. And he said, yeah, that doesn't surprise me because when I was there, I had the engineer who was with our workshop go throughout and check everything. He says, trouble on the horizon. <laughs> He already knew, and Dr. Hendricks already knew that they didn't build it right. But that's just an example that we go about things, we have good starts and it sputters, it collapses, it doesn't work, but eventually we get around to it, you know? And um, that's, uh, that's always been in the back of my mind, those two experiences about making the foundation of heart and being able to ride through our false starts and our, our difficulties. Sometimes we start projects and, they're not completed, and then we go back to it in different time periods, usually numerical time periods. So I just want to share that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Doug. Thank you, everyone. It's uh, that time again that we uh, can pray together. I'll just uh, share the screen, and then let's pray.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and uh, have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye. Have a blessed day. Thank you.